Hey Geeks, Tim Tibbetts with MajorGeeks.com and today we're going to take a look at PC Mark 10 Professional. This will benchmark your PC based on what they consider real world activities and applications etc. It's about a 20 minute run for the main test which you see here. We'll show you the other tests. We'll run this main test and we'll hit pause a couple of times so we're not sitting here for 20 minutes waiting because I really don't have anything to say for 20 minutes. Over here at Benchmarks, you will find this benchmark here, which is what we're looking at right now, what we're going to run. You can come down here to your details so that you can see what it is you want to do. So a good example would be, let's say you never do any video conferencing, then don't bother running the test. Just uncheck it. You can see you've got web browsing, app startup. We'll see all this live as it's happening shortly. Back to benchmarks, you also have the extended. I don't know how long this takes because I didn't try it, but I'm guessing considering how many options you have here that it's probably at least 10 minutes longer. So you have troubleshooting settings should you run into any trouble. And that about covers it. Let's go over to options quickly. There's not too much here you need. You need a key for this program. It's mostly designed for larger businesses, corporations, enterprises to use the professional. You have the scan system info, validate results online. This is off by default, so feel free to turn it on or off. It's up to you. And that's pretty much it. Check for updates, your version. So basically, if you're just looking to run it, you can just come to the front page, and this is the one they suggest you run. The first thing it's going to do is get your system information unless you unchecked it and jump right into video conferencing. It will do this by opening multiple windows to see how well your machine can run and how well it can handle it. Again, these tests take a little while, so bear with me as we come back and forth and it will appear on the video to screen jump, but it didn't. I'm just uh, trying to not spend 20 minutes inside here. If you're wondering, later on when we're done, we'll show you how you can go online and check your score, how you can save your own scores and compare your own scores and we can talk about the different versions. The reason you might want to do this is Let's say you're having trouble with your video conferencing, you're getting video lag, uh, stuttering. Well, you can run these tests, go online, look up a similar CPU, look up a similar graphic card, and look, you know, see what somebody else is doing with a similar computer, and you can say, wait a minute, they're running 16 gigs of RAM, I'm running eight and I'm stuttering. That'll get you around to where your, pro where your problem probably is, so. All right, let's take a quick second here, and we'll be back as it goes into the next step. And now it's going to do web browsing. So it's going to simulate like a shopping type of environment where you're lining your mouse over a screenshot and then it opens up to a larger preview window on the side, for example. Here it comes. It will also look at social media, like when you're typing in on social media and other types of shopping pages. Again, its goal is to test very common activities to see where your problems and your bottlenecks might be. So we'll hold up here. There's nothing too exciting going on. And we'll be back again in just a minute. There is, by the way, the social media testing. I should tell you it does sometimes do all of these multiple times, so it's making sure that your computer is running properly. We should also mention before you run this, what you really, really want to do is check your Windows updates, make sure you've got them all. Check your drivers, make sure your drivers are all up to date. At that point, you want to restart your computer, give it a couple minutes to start, then close any running programs if you have any, but I would discount anything that you run at startup because you really want to benchmark knowing the way your computer is actually running every day. You don't want to, you know, they have a program called 3D Mark, which is for benchmarking games. That's different. You want to get your computer in gaming mode and get the highest score you can. Not quite the goal here. So as you can see, the web browser will simulate a weather thing or shopping for apartments and some other things that can use up a decent amount of bandwidth. And then I believe after that, we move on to another test. It's also going to test videos in your web browser. So it's going to look for drop frames, tell you the resolution and so on. As you know, most of us nowadays watch videos. So this is always a potential area for bottlenecks where you want to compare to other people to see how your videos are playing. And of course we have the 3D Aquarium screensaver, 2017 version, kind of cool. I would use that as a screensaver. 
Here we go. Next up, we have the app startup. It's going to start up GIMP, Chromium, Firefox, and LibreOffice Writer. And basically, it's going to open them, close them, open them, close them. It's going to go through this for probably five minutes of the test. There's GIMP with all the plugins getting rolling. That'll take up a bit of space. Layers, toolboxes, so that'll close. And you should be coming around to Firefox shortly. Yep. And once Firefox gets moving, it'll close it and so on and so forth. And it's going to repeat this. I don't remember. Each one's a little bit different, like the social media aspect of the web browser was a few minutes. A uh, couple of times it did it two, three, four times. This, I swear, it must do it. It must open these things six, seven, eight times, but it wants to get a consistent across the board result so that the average is accurate. Should be finishing the app startup now and running into spreadsheets, photo editing, video editing, rendering and visualization. This is the last part of these tests and a little bit longer than the others. As you can see, we've got the writer coming up. It's going to open and close that. It's going to open and close a photo editor, a video editor, and then work through some rendering and visualization. Essentially, it's going to type stuff in as we go along. It's going to adjust pictures so that it can see how it functions over time while you're, there you go, while you're expanding the window and stuff like that. As mentioned, there it is doing some writing, doing some tests. While it's doing that and getting ready to jump into photo and video, video editing, let's discuss the versions. This is, again, the professional version. It is expensive to an end user, but for large businesses, organizations, corporations, not so much. In two weeks from the time I did this video, on June 22nd, they will release free and, I believe, advanced. So the free version will let you run these tests you see here and even compare them online. So that's kind of cool. Whereas the advanced version will let you run all the tests and then as well as doing it online. The professional version that you see here also lets you do private offline results. It has command line options which are handy for some of these big networks. And of course it is available for commercial use. Now the spreadsheets are running and we'll show you that real quick and we will continue to hit pause and jump back in so you can just take a look at the photo editing and the video editing and all the steps that go through briefly to give you an idea so back in a flash spreadsheets is still rolling what it's doing now is it's running through LibreOffice PC Mark Calc it runs through a few different things like that just to give it again a test across you have a basis and it should be done shortly Spreadsheets is now complete, so it's now going to go into photo editing. Let me drag it back in here. And essentially with the photo editing, it's going to take a couple of pictures and it's going to edit the color, the contrast, the saturation, play around with it, drag it around, and once again give you a nice baseline for how your computer is reacting to editing photos. Very important for graphic artists, especially some of the big firms that have many people using these applications and you want the most productivity and lack of crashing as you saw it said not responding as I was playing with it uh, from dragging it over so possible bottleneck and nothing too exciting on this one so we'll hang in there for a little bit and wait for video editing just want to make sure that you guys can see all the different things at least a little bit and see everything it's going to do for you and again briefly this is simulating a photo gallery Nothing too special, just loading up the pictures. It doesn't do too much as far as slides or anything else. All I saw it do is just load up a bunch of pictures in there, which, as you know, can use up some memory. Looks like we're ready to do video editing. Now, I don't need to tell you, if you work for a company that does multimedia, it's not too uncommon to have a system slow down, crash. These are problems you don't want to deal with. Once again, one of the many reasons why this program exists so that you can actually simulate these things and look for again bottlenecks that could be causing you problems with the machine it's also a great way to evaluate if you're in a firm we need to buy a hundred computers you could buy one and run the test to make sure that that computer is up to snuff before you make the mistake of bringing a hundred computers into an organization or more only to find out that they're not up to par to what the company needs to do now the one thing about the video editing, I should mention this before, I've done it a few times. The interesting thing is, you see there's nothing going on here. I never saw anything, it just says running video editing 
and that's it until it goes on to the next one talk about not exciting huh I'm trying and now it's going to jump into rendering and visualization probably the one thing in here that kind of looks cool again this isn't 3d mark if you want to see some really really cool graphics get 3d mark not only will it benchmark your machine it's just really cool to watch but again that's a problem with this video I'd like it to be exciting I'd like to talk faster and blah 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 maybe throw in a couple of jokes but it, it's just not really exciting it's not its goal its goal is to make sure your computer is running its everyday tasks as needed so don't forget that it's not the most thrilling thing in the world, and I apologize in advance for not finding a way to make it more exciting. But here we are. So, rendering and visualization, I believe once we get done with this, we are pretty much complete with the tests. We can look online, and you can go about your way. But while we're listening to me now, what a great time to click subscribe while you're watching this stuff go by. And if you enjoyed our video, check out some of our other videos, tutorials, guides. We would appreciate it. And we'll be back in just a second. Another quick thing with uh, is this app it runs here. It says LibTiff382 POV Ray for Windows Rendering Bench. So it looks like this is built in. I'd love to act smarter than I am. I guess I could have Googled it and pretended I knew what I was talking about, but I'm not familiar with the program. Obviously, it has something to do with rendering benchmarks. So feel free to mention in the comments if you're more familiar with it. I could look it up, but I'm just trying to run the program and show you what it does. So that's almost done. And we made it. It takes a minute here. You'll see back here it says, please wait. It said it was putting it all together for us, getting the results. And it should only take 30 seconds or so. But there's always been a slight hang right here while it loads everything up and gets ready to show you your results, give you your score. There's not a lot of scores online yet because this hasn't even been out for 24 hours. So the only people really using it are those who have already bought it, maybe not uploaded. And of course, press and the like. So there's not a lot to be seen online yet. So let's give this another minute and we'll bring that up and we'll show you online. And as I mentioned, get you out of here and get you on your way and there it is there's your 52.99 my scores have been in that neighborhood lately so real quickly you can get your detailed scores this is nice because you see my app startup is high so let's say i'm doing a lot of video editing as you can see my video editing is a little bit of a lower score so you can take into account your frames per second etc and see if there's something in there you think you can fix here's your system information if you want more you can click system details so there's my core i7 my clock frequency uh, my video card and the fact that it has four megs of ram my or memory and my computer with the storage that has 16 gigs of memory and did i mention memory so here you can save, load, or compare. So in other words, what you want to do is name it here. Give it a description here, whatever the test was you ran, and you can save it. Once you're done, you can save another test or more. And once you have two tests, you can compare them. And of course, you can always load your test as well. So let's do a quick look online and show you what you can do here. Again, there's your score. And if you scroll down to here, add to compare, for example, right here is your compare. Now, let's say we want to compare same CPU, same GPU, graphic card, or similar systems. So if we do similar systems, there really aren't any yet. Um, this is me. So every score you see here is me. I get to be number one for a little while. So see that? I'm number one. Go back. And again, it just depends on what you want to compare to. So uh, let's say the same GPU. And this might be, that's not me. Hey, so they're popping up already. As I mentioned, more and more will show up as time goes on. So I feel pretty good about that. I am still number one. Oh, no, am I? Yeah, I am. Yeah, buddy. All right. So and finally, I didn't have to click back, but uh, same GPU same CPU which one did I just do I don't know there you go so that gives you your score now you can click here and do add to compare and that's going to allow you to if you have a similar computer similar graphic card or similar machine 
add to compare and find out where your differences are so that you can see where you could possibly find your bottle next because if we do the add to compare you got them side by side it's an i5 of course you're going to be probably lower me because i'm an i7 um, you can you can kind of look and see we have different clock speeds for our video cards there's a lot of information here that i could spend another 15 minutes on but it's pretty easy to just compare them and find out where for example if i was looking at him and I was the i5 and I was having a certain problem, I might be able to look at my processor and think maybe I don't have enough processor. And so maybe the video card's a little weaker. It all depends on your area of the memory. You can get more detailed comparisons, like just a lot of stuff you can do in here. So there you go. That's about a wrap. So there is PC Mark 10. That is what you get in the professional version. And as mentioned, the basic test that you just saw now, as well as checking it online, will be available in the free version on June 22nd. As always, thank you for watching our longest, probably most boring video ever, but it doesn't have a lot of teeth, but it is really, really cool. There you go. Thanks for watching. I hope we we'll see you next time.